another complicated issue when you're traveling is trying to figure out the public transportation. <laughs> the ink in the printer uh, at the immigration office here is out. The wild goose chase begins. <laughs> it's turning into a whole day of that. I wanted to introduce you guys to Paco. <laughs> He's literally on my head. We've got a handful of projects that we really need to do. So you can see that the raw water pump is leaking. Fingers crossed, nothing weird goes wrong. <laughs> Previously on Project Atticus. After spending three years refitting our fixer-upper sailboat, we left the United States with only $2,000 and the goal of working while we cruised. We made it as far as Isla Mujeres, Mexico before we ran out of money and had to find work. For the next year, we did freelance boat repair jobs until we saved up enough cash to cast the lines and sail south to explore the Western Caribbean. Recently, we said goodbye to our folks after a fun-filled month spent exploring Roatan in the Bay Islands of Honduras. It was sad saying goodbye, but we both looked forward to beginning the next stage of our adventure. All right, well, we have been at Fantasy Island Marina for about six weeks now, <laughs> and we've been in the Bay Islands for almost two months, and so that means that my visa is coming up, and uh, I think we only have a couple days left, so we're off to the immigration office here in Roatan to go get an extension for both of our visas so that we can stay here another month. And we're gonna need every bit of that additional month because we've got a handful of projects that we really need to do before we head off to Cuba. So we're getting ready to hop into a Colectivo, another kind of complicated issue when you're traveling in uh, different countries that speak different languages, especially in Central America, uh, is trying to figure out the public transportation. <laughs> and every country has a different process of how you get in, how you pay the person, how you tell them where to get out. So even though we know theoretically how Colectivos work, because we've done it in a lot of countries now, I'm always a little bit like nervous because uh, I feel like a dweeb just trying to like figure out how to be a cool transportation kid. <laughs> well, and they, they all have different like payment processes like some you pay right when you get in mm -hmm. some you pay when you get off and like if you don't do it right they just stare at you like you're an idiot yeah and then you we also don't know the route exactly so you're like constantly on the lookout <laughs> to make sure that you're like not passing your destination uh -huh. so yeah the first couple times doing this in a country you know for the, for the first time you've done in that country is a little stressful <laughs> but fun yeah part of the adventure painless only cost us 60 lempiras which is about three dollars and now we're heading up the mountain to the port captain's office the immigration office and the customs office i think <laughs> yeah now we gotta find where the office is yeah. but yeah and it only took us like a half hour uh-huh yeah so it really wasn't bad very packed though The ink in the printer uh, at the immigration office here is out, so we have to go on a wild goose chase into town. We have to go to an internet cafe, any internet cafe, give someone there this piece of paper, and they'll know what to do with it. <laughs> then they'll print that out, then we'll go to a bank and give what they printed out to the bank, I believe, and then pay and then come back. So I think I, I, think I understood correctly. We'll find out. <laughs> Okay. <laughs> 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 
I'm so glad that worked out. For a minute it was like, go to any internet cafe, give them this piece of paper and they'll know what to do. And I was like, yeah, okay. <laughs> but it worked. <laughs> immigration. So our next stop is to the port captain's office, which is actually back in town. So we're going back to Cox and Hole downtown. <laughs> Here we are literally going back to the area where that internet cafe was. <laughs> and they're not like close to each other. Like they're, it's like a 15 minute cab ride one way. <laughs> so this is our second time heading there today. And then we gotta go back to the immigration office. <laughs> it's turning into a whole day event and it's literally like a couple of pieces of paper that we need to sign, they need to sign, and that's it. <laughs> that's why, like, when the idea of paperwork comes up, in my head I'm like, okay, that's one day gone from your life. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> so I'm still basically okay because you know, we might get this done in one day. <laughs> Immigration. Hoping this will be the last stop. My little engine is petering out. <laughs> All right, finally done with paperwork. It's about 2:30 p.m. We're catching a colectivo back to Fantasy Island. It's been a long day, but productive. I wanted to introduce you guys to Paco, the resident. Um, monkey who lives here and sometimes he'll come over and take food from me depending on if he wants it if he's hungry if he likes what he sees hey Paco you want this <laughs> oh my gosh he's above me he's literally on my head <laughs> hi Paco oh he wants the camera oh boy <laughs> Oh man, <laughs> that was crazy. Anyways, it's really fun kind of seeing when the, they're kind of like the, the troublemakers, the kids on the block. It's fun to see when they come around, they just kind of cruise in, see what they can steal, and then head back out. <laughs> and it's just such a beautiful day, so I'll show you guys our view at the marina. Well, another day doing boat work in paradise. I wanted to attack a small problem that I found here at the base of the mast. Um, there is a small crack developing at the base of the mast, right uh, at the base where the extrusion meets what I believe is called the shoe. And I think it's from corrosion between the shoe and the extrusion and the mast itself that it's just it's such an old mast that uh, salt water has gotten in there and it's just been corroding for years and years and years and that corrosion kind of builds up that powdery stuff and expands and that expansion is causing uh, small cracks at the base of the mast now I've been told that this isn't the biggest deal in the world because in a lot of ways that corrosion has seized the shoe to the mast. Like it's all kind of like so corroded together that it's not gonna come apart, um, at least in the short term. Um, but this definitely adds to our list of things that we need to do before we cross the Pacific for sure. So we're gonna talk about this in an upcoming episode, but we are starting to talk about where we want to do a little mini refit uh, this summer and we're kind of toying between uh, Rio Dulce Guatemala and going back to Florida so one of those two we're not sure 
but this is definitely going to be something we'll have to address. This is the second small little crack at the base of the main mast, and there's actually a small little crack at the base of the mizzen as well. For right now, what I'm going to do is I'm going to drill an eighth inch hole at the very like leading edge of the crack just to keep the crack from continuing any further. Drilling that hole will make the crack stop in its tracks, um, at least in the short term. I'm gonna be using an eighth inch bit, but when you're drilling into aluminum or any metal, you wanna use some kind of oil to make sure that the drill bit doesn't get too hot, you don't damage the drill bit. So the oil that I'm gonna be using is actually just canola oil or vegetable oil. Um, I learned that trick in Key West. Works really well. It's not the best, uh, but it's, it's basically good enough and you're always gonna have it on hand. So vegetable oil, a little trick. Well, that is what happens when you put too much weight into your drill and then you get a little bit off center, out of line. That's not good. Well, see, that just goes to show you, don't listen to anything I have to say. <laughs> Okay, so hopefully that will keep that crack from getting worse and uh, be essentially a band-aid for the next couple months until we're able to actually do something to fix the problem. I have one more project that I gotta get done before we get out to anchor, and it's actually a problem that we fixed in the past. We gotta redo it, and that is the raw water pump is leaking raw water again. So let me show you what's going on. Now, a lot of you guys probably saw the episode not that long ago where we fixed the leak in the raw water pump. What we did then was we changed the seals out, um, but what I've found out since then is a lot of times if you have a bad leak in your raw water pump, uh, you're gonna get buildup, like mineral and salt buildup and corrosion on the shaft that goes through the seals. And as long as you've got kind of a rough surface on that shaft, it's just gonna wear whatever new seals you put on there in a short amount of time and you're gonna have leaking again pretty quickly. And so that's obviously what happened. Um, I tried to clean the shaft up as much as I could, but I just wasn't able to clean it all the way. Um, so I ended up getting a complete rebuild kit. But to access the engine, we've gotta go in here. Now I would go as far as to say that the largest challenge associated with cruising on a small sailboat is storage trying to find the space to stow all of the stuff that you need to cruise successfully. And so what ends up happening is every little nook and cranny in the boat is completely full with stuff. And this area below the companionway and aft of the companionway ladder falls right into that category. So we've got this area totally packed. And so I'm just gonna show you what it takes to access the engine. Now, a lot of the components to the engine, such as the sea strainer and the fuel filter, the Raycor filter, the emergency fuel shutoff valve, a lot of that can be accessed by the cockpit lockers, but the raw water pump and the engine itself is accessed here. So it does take me a little while to get to it. All right, let's get started. So as you can see, this is where we keep all of our jerry cans. We've got water, we've got gasoline, and then we've got diesel. And so that's mostly what we store under here. Okay, so that is our engine access. And there's our beautiful 25 horsepower beta. So you can see that the raw water pump is leaking even worse than it was before we repaired it last time. So this time, like I said, I'm gonna disassemble the whole thing and basically replace all the components. So the bearings, all the seals, even the shaft. Well, 
That was easy, got the pump off the engine. Now, for those of you that saw me do this last time, I actually took the seals out with the pump still in place, and I will never do that again. This, removing this was super freaking easy, and then being able to remove all the seals and everything out of the pump sitting here at a table is gonna be a whole lot easier than doing it while it's still in place. Fingers crossed, nothing weird goes wrong, and this goes smooth. Let's disassemble this bad boy and replace the components. Okay, so the first step was to take the faceplate off of the pump. Then I had to remove the impeller itself. And there's a plate between the impeller and the rest of the pump, took that out. And I had to remove the spacer, which actually pushes the seals in place. Now I'm removing the first of two seals that are on the raw water side of the pump. There's the first seal. And then the second seal that actually seals against the pump housing. Then I had to remove the oil seal on the engine side. Now, this is my first oil seal I've had to remove from anything, and I imagine that it's always difficult because to keep oil from leaking past a rotating shaft, you have to have a really, really tight seal. a sur clip that was keeping the bearings and shaft assembly in place. That was tough because I didn't have a sur clip removal tool. And then I had to remove the shaft and bearing assembly. Yeah, so you can see that uh, this is the part of the shaft that had a little bit of leakage, for, you know, for a long time. And so you can see that the shaft does have corrosion and so that's what would have messed with the new seals that I put in and allowed it to continue to leak. But you can see that the raw water got to the bearings and it's apparently been wreaking havoc for a long time because these bearings are totally shot. So good to know. I've got the pump completely disassembled and I spent a long time cleaning the inside of the pump. You can see it's pretty darn clean in there because I wanted to make sure that these new seals that I'm putting in are gonna seal well, not only to the new shaft, but also to the uh, bronze of the pump housing. And so the pump housing is clean. You can see this is the old shaft and bearings and the old bearings are like disgusting and totally shot and i can't believe that this thing was even turning um, i actually think what happened was when i received the engine from beta it didn't have this spacer inside of the raw water pump because the first time i disassembled it this wasn't there what this spacer does is it pushes the raw water seal up against the very end of the housing. So it keeps that raw water seal in place, which keeps the water from leaking down the shaft. Without this spacer, that seal can get out of place, which can allow raw water to run through. But I think it's been doing that since I installed the engine, so for years. And that's why you've got these bearings totally shot. All right, well, it is time for me to reassemble this bad boy. Let's do it. Now here I had to reinstall that sur clip without the proper tool. So what I ended up doing was getting a little creative using a couple Allen keys, a screwdriver, and a pair of vice grips. Oh boy, well, 
took me half the day and I damn near gave up a couple times, but I got the pump back together with all new components. The trickiest part was getting this oil seal out off of the shaft because it fits so snug. It was hard, man. And I was using this dental pick. You need something that's thin enough that'll make it into the seal, but if it's that thin, it does, it's not very strong, so you can't put a whole lot of leverage on it. Besides that, though, I think we are ready to go. So let's go install this bad boy. did it so we got no leaks whatsoever and uh, I'm gonna let the engine run for a little while just to be 100% certain but uh, I think we did it nice one high five guys all right well now it's time to clean up the boat before Desiree sees this mess because this is a disaster <laughs> God, there was a sur clip in there that I had to get out. And like, <laughs> I'm reading the instructions and it's like, grab a sur clip removal tool. And I'm like, F you. <laughs> you know what I mean, like who has a sur clip removal tool? 